Hello dear teachers and welcome to our video lesson plan on the topic factors affecting pitch of sound. I am Apurva Barve from Aisar Pune and this lesson plan was developed in collaboration with Vasundhara Patade from Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan's Paranspe Vidya Mandir. She has taught this topic in her class using some fun hands-on activities and we really hope that you and your students will also enjoy learning this topic using this approach. With this lesson, students will be able to identify the variations in pitch of sound and the factors that affect the pitch of sound. Before starting the lesson, you can play some music, just like the one that you heard at the beginning of this video. You can then revise concepts related to sound, such as wavelength and amplitude of the sound wave, compressions and rarefactions, etc. Then tell your students that they are now going to learn about the factors that affect the high pitch and low pitch sounds. You can introduce the topic by using a slinky to demonstrate a model of a sound wave. And this will also help them revise the compression and rarefaction that occurs in longitudinal sound waves. What you need to do is just push the slinky from one end and explain how the sound waves are produced. You can then explain that when we hear something, we are sensing the vibrations in the air. The number of vibrations per second is known as frequency which is measured in hertz. 1 hertz is equal to 1 vibration per second. This introductory activity will give the students a good idea about how sound waves travel. You can then move to other activities which explore the production of sound. To begin with, you can do the straw flute activity where one single straw is used to produce sound of different pitch. You can ask the students to observe this activity closely and note down their observations. These observations can then be discussed later. For this, you will need a straw and a scissor. Flatten the straw and make a slanting cut on both sides at one end. Then keep the reed in the mouth and blow the air. Ask the students to observe. While blowing, cut the straw and tell students to listen for different pitches of sound. Describe how blowing into the straw produces sound. Do the long and short straws produce the same sound? Describe the difference between them. When the air is sucked into the straw, does it produce the same sound as blowing into the straw? From this experiment, can you relate the length of the straws to the type of sounds they produce? To further elaborate on this, you can compare between the low pitch sound of a duck and a high pitch sound of a coil. Or you can give the examples of the difference in pitch between the voices of men and women. These are very useful to clarify the concepts of frequency and pitch. You can also use the next activity of the bottle sound for this. Demonstrate the activity and ask the students to note down their observations. You can then discuss these to clarify the concept of pitch. For this activity, take three to four such bottles and fill water in them. Let the level of water vary between each of these bottles. Blow air into the bottle and let the students observe the difference in the sound produced in each bottle. And compare these. Why do these bottles create sound? As vibrations produce sound, what is vibrating in these bottles? Which sound has the higher pitch? What makes the sound produced in each bottle different from each other? Do all the bottles produce sounds of the same pitch? The length of all bottles is the same. Then, what causes the difference in pitch? If the type of liquid in any bottle is changed, will it still produce the same sound? After this, you can perform another very fun activity to explore this concept of pitch further. This is called the Roaring Cups activity. Materials required for doing this activity are paper cup, stiff straws and paper pins. What you have to do is cut holes in the straw and insert the paper clips in it. Also make a small hole in the paper cup and insert this straw in it. You can vary the lengths of the straws and insert them into different cups. Once your setup is ready, wet your finger and rub the straw. You will 
notice that different lengths will produce different notes. Let the students perform this activity in groups of five. While they are working, you can ask them questions such as, How is the sound produced in the cup? What will happen if we use cups of different sizes? Ask them to observe closely what happens to the sound when you vary the length of the straw. The students really enjoyed performing this activity and understood the concept very well. Next, you can demonstrate an activity called the singing pipe activity. For this, you just need a 1 meter corrugated pipe. This activity will show that frequency depends on the length of the air column inside the pipe. You can also discuss with your students what will happen if you use a plain pipe instead of a corrugated one. We have seen that using such small activities really helps make the topic very simple. The students remain interested and engaged throughout the class and learn the topic well. You can find all the details of the activities we just described in our text lesson plan of the same topic. The link is in the description box below. After this, you can also explore our video lesson plan on the topic how we hear, which is also related to the concept of sound and hearing. We do hope that you will try this activity based teaching and learning in your class. We are sure that you and your students will really enjoy. Do send us your feedback. Thank you.